I'm going to make a uh, chicken bone-in thighs with a lot of puree of basil which I make put in all olive oil put in the freezer you can see my recipe and all these vegetables we're going to saute it together and in the back I have a quarter chicken stock ready because the chicken thighs really don't give off enough flavor and white wine and hopefully since it's gluten free I'm using uh, brown rice flour to coat the chicken when I saute it hopefully that's going to be enough to give the sauce which I want a lot of because I'm having even though this is a gluten free recipe I'm having this uh, whole wheat uh, fusilli for my dinner to go with it so I need enough sauce to cover the pasta and that's why we're making a lot of sauce extra the first thing we just take some sea salt season the chicken don't be afraid because all this flavoring is going to go into the sauce anyway so do both sides like that salt and pepper and then we're going to put it in flour saute it get all the vegetables cut up and put this thing together so we'll get the uh, nice sized skillet olive oil get that warm we're going to start sauteing the chicken and since it's a bone in after the chicken's brown nicely then we'll throw the vegetables in and the vegetables have plenty of time to cook because the chicken will take some time now we'll coat it with the uh, with the brown rice flour and if that doesn't uh, help thicken up the uh, the sauce enough whatever flour whatever flour I have left there I'll just blend it in with a little water and whip it in well this brown rice flour is nice and fine so it should work well so don't forget salt pepper both sides we're starting off with a high flame because we want to get some color on this and all we're going to do is just brown one side turn it over and throw all the vegetables that were diced up nice and small and if you notice I use these vegetables quite often in cooking well that's because they work well together they give off a nice flavor and that's what counts taste you need a lot of basil for this uh, for this item we're making today it's going to be very heavy basil Excellent. We'll bring over the vegetables. And if you noticed, today I'm leaving the garlic whole. I don't know, it's just so much fun when the, everything is on your plate and you see a large clove of garlic and it's yours and you fight for it. But the peppers, the celery, the onions, and the carrots are diced small. Because this isn't the main vegetable. This is just, I mean, these are vegetables, yes. But if you want to have another vegetable to go with the dish, that's fine. But all of these are going to flavor the sauce very nicely. With the white wine and the chicken stock. It's easier, easier for you guys to get the, just to go to the supermarket and then buy those chicken thighs without boning them out. I prefer boning them out, but it's a little work. It's really not that necessary. And you know what they say, meat cooked on the bone 
has a better flavor. So we'll go along with that. Because they know what they're talking about. Now I need my fork or a pair of tongs. Very nice. Okay. You see I have a high flame, even higher. This is never going to burn. All it can do is brown. We get a nice nice coloring on there. It even smells good right now. Anytime you have a flour, I don't care what kind it is, where it's it's cut, it's brown, it's cooking, it gives off its own unique flavor. And after this dish is completely done, the sauce is finished, everything is fine, it's seasoned. At that point, I'm going to add all of the uh, basil puree. I just like to get a little color. Of course, this is not going to color like regular flour, but it will color. Yeah, we're getting there. Once I turn it over, I'll lower the flame. I don't want the vegetables to burn, I want them to cook. Put on the fan, we got a little smoke going there. That's fine. So now we'll lower the flame. And that flour did a nice job in uh, giving a little coating to the uh, chicken. So now, you don't hear any cooking, that's because now it's, it's too low. As soon as you add a lot of items to the pan, it just cools off the pan. So we'll bring it back up to a nice, good flame to get it going a little bit more. No more smoke, so we don't need that fan on. It's rather noisy. So what we're doing really is, we're sweating up the vegetables with the chicken to release all those lovely flavors they have. And then we're going to measure the uh, amount of chicken stock. I'm going to put a quart in there and the white wine. And what's left? Just let it simmer. And I'm sure we're going to have to uh, add some of that uh, flour. I don't want a thick sauce, but I don't want a watery sauce either. And as soon as I add the stock and the, uh, the wine, we're going to cover this and just let it cook. I'll put timing on it. These aren't very large thighs, so usually the ones in the uh, supermarket are much bigger than this, so they'll take maybe 10 more minutes to cook. But you know when it's ready, you'll stick, well, we'll get to that point. Now we got to measure the, uh, the wine and the stock. We're going to put the wine in first. And that's going to be a full cup. This will reduce. I want the flavor of this good white wine in there. Nice dry white wine.
That'll soak right, right, right into the chicken. And I'll wait a couple of minutes and then we'll add the stock. Still working with a nice high flame. And the rest of this little bit here's looking at you, kid. Mmm, very nice. That was a Pinot Grigio, but a good one. Nice, very nice flavor. Now, of course, this is going to be a, a white looking sauce because we're not putting tomato in there, which I could, but then it's uh, like a different dish. I mean, there's a million things you could do to this. You want to increase the peppers? You like peppers? Increase it. You want to take some out? Take some out. Put more carrots. You can do so many things. This is just a way of cooking this chicken. That's going to be tasty. And that's why, that's why I make the videos. Just to have some good, I make, this is my dinner tonight. And I have to eat something that tastes good. When it doesn't taste good, you never get to see the video. And that's happened a few times. Okay. We need one quart of stock. This is going to reduce. And we're going to have leftover for the pasta. And we have uh, one, six pieces there. So if it's for three people, you need a lot of sauce for pasta, at least I do. So we're going to put one quart of uh, chicken stock in there. Let's hope that I made one quart. But you know what? A half a quart's plenty. I'll just mark that down. Lower the flame. You don't have to waste gas or cook that fast. Just lower it. That's it. Cover it. And I'm going to come back here and at this point I'm going to come back in 15 minutes and check it. You know, halfway through the 15 minutes, just turn the chicken over. It smells good. It smells like chicken soup. Well, that's the 15 minute mark from where we started, not from the beginning, but after we added all the liquids. We're going to let it go just five more minutes. It's a little firm. So let's say 20 minutes for this size. And they're much larger, probably 25 minutes. Okay, we're done. That's uh, 20 minutes. Now what do we do next? What you would do is, you take the chicken out and just set it off to the side. That cooked chicken. And now you work on the sauce. And like I said, it looks a little thin. So we're going to take the rest of it. Because it is thin. Take the rest of that flour. Which isn't a lot. Because we measured in the beginning. So we're going to take this flour and mix it with a little cold water. as you see but you can 
transfer the flour if you want. Now if you use regular flour, it's not going to be gluten free, but that's your choice. So you can use regular flour in this recipe and it's going to work the same way. So now that we've done that, we'll just drizzle it in. And watch it thicken up a little. That is perfect now. So the amount of flour that was measured for the chicken, all the leftover goes into the sauce. Now I've already added salt and pepper to this. Tastes great now. Now we add the basil. And what you do is, the chicken is over here. This is ready. But you're not ready for dinner yet. So you just put this in here all the basil and get it all and you have to bring this to a simmer you just can't add something to a sauce and then uh, think it's okay everything must come to a boil just quickly slowly whatever so nothing spoils on you now that's what I call basil this is basil chicken, not just a little bit, but a lot. And there's the sauce that's going to go on the pasta. Look at that, how it's going to spoon over the pasta and cling to the pasta very nicely. Give it a taste. That is basil. You just can't get away from it. So if you love basil, look at my recipe for the basil um, puree, make that, leave it in the freezer. This basil's been in the freezer for like six months. Look at the color. There's no freezer burn, nothing. It's perfect. So, shut the flame off. As soon as it bubbles a little bit, leave it off to the side. A couple hours from now, put your pasta up, boil it, and the last few minutes when you think the pasta is almost ready, take the chicken, put it back in the sauce. And then you're going to enjoy a lovely dinner. I will show you this on the plate, but for now, I'm waiting also for my wife to come home, then I will complete it. Now we'll finish this up. Just put the chicken back in the sauce. We'll cover it up. Let that simmer for a few minutes. The flavors will just soak right in. That's just, look how nice that's covering that chicken. That's just about it. We'll let this get that chicken hot and then we're going to ready to serve. Now while this is simmering, the pasta is cooking.
I'll get that grated cheese out and be all ready. Now I passed this cooking here. That water, when you taste it, should taste almost as salty as salt water. Then when you add the pasta to the uh, chicken, everything is seasoned together. The pasta is done. Never rinse it off, just drain it right in there. I like to mix mine up, have it fully coated, and then plate it up. Look how nice that sauce is sticking to the pasta. So that was a pound. I think it was a pound. It didn't even say what it was on the package. It felt like a pound. And that's just the right amount of sauce. Now if you want you could also drizzle a little of extra virgin olive oil right into this to give it that extra virgin olive oil taste. But you don't have to. But I am. Now all you have to do is put it on a plate, sprinkle a little Pecorino Romano cheese over it, or whatever cheese you like, and there you have it. So let me make my plate. <laughs> oh, that's plenty. Now that's normal portion, but guaranteed, since it tastes so good, I'll be going back there for some more. Put a little cheese. What could be better? Oh, I know what could be better. Lobster tails. Enjoy.